That's Quanda. Now to our next question. It's come via email, and our Q&A email. It's from Lois Calvert from Chifley in the ACT. Why do the Greens have such an easy time in the media? They are just as political as any of the major parties, but they do not receive the same critical scrutiny of their motives, aims, methods and spin as Labor, Liberal or National parties or even minor groups such as One Nation. Are they a protected species? Bob Brown. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, um, Love it. It's a big worry, isn't it? One and a quarter million voters voted for the Greens. We got 9% of the vote. ABC uh, gave us 2% up to 7% of the coverage in the last election campaign and, and we got locked out from a fair share. But there's this view that the Greens, who are the cutting edge for the 21st century on, on ecological issues, on social issues, on demo democracy issues, should be kept out of the race, that we're invalid, that this is a two-party system. Well, it isn't. And we're in there, we're the third party, the fastest growing party in Australia, and we're in there to put the big parties on their mettle because they're so similar to each other on so many issues, and we're thinking long term. We think, and, and here's the big, the big difference. Politics is about a three-year trajectory for the big parties. For us, it's about our grandkids and what's this world, the world that we're going to hand on to them. And when you start thinking about that, you come up with different answers. It's a giving type of philosophy. We're in the political arena. This is a democracy. And I only, w I only wished we got the same proportion of coverage okay, Bob, that the big parties we're get. We're going to give the <laughs> coverage to that question. For it. <laughs> let's, let's, hear from someone, let's hear from someone else on that question. We'll go to Tony Abbott. Well, well I, I think the Greens do get a, a, soft, a soft ride in the media because they're never going to form a government. And uh, parties That's that what are, you think. Pa yeah. Parties, parties, <laughs> parties that, are, that are possibly going to form governments are subjected, quite rightly, to very rigorous scrutiny. Now, when it comes to ideals, I don't think anyone should say that the Greens or the ALP or the Liberal Party, none of us have a monopoly of idealism. I think all political parties have ideals. The Labor Party has a great ideal of I'm, I'm fairness bit, and justice. I'm just a bit the Liberal Party, the right of the Liberal Party debate, has, 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 <laughs> has, a, has a great ideal of freedom uh, and uh, the development of the individual. And the Greens want to protect the environment. For God's sake, we all want to protect the environment these days. Don't think you're the only one who wants to well, do come it. Down to, come down to Tasmania and look what your government is doing to those forests uh, uh, and the wild. I wish I was still in government and then I'd protect them for you, Bob. Tanya, Tanya Plibersek. Tanya Plibersek. Oh, look, I, I think it, it is fair enough to, um, to uh, have greater scrutiny on the parties that are seeking to form government. I think that that's perfectly fair and I'm, I'm happy to be scrutinised for our policies. It, it is frustrating to hear Bob say things like the major parties are both the same. I can't imagine John Howard apologising to the stolen generations. Not I can't imagine... I, I can't imagine, are greater than I can't the imagine with the John Greens. Howard getting rid of work choices. I can't imagine John Howard taking children out of detention centres. I can't imagine John Howard presiding over an education Let's revolution. Let's not have a pious litany, I can't, eh? well, We've <laughs> had one pious litany. Let's not have another one. Uh, OK. Well. OK. Well, let's go to the audience then. There's a gentleman there with the, with the uh, moustache. In the middle. Thank you I, very much. I, I think the question becomes is the, the, the way the media can basically control the consciousness, the, the questions that are asked to the, to the politicians that we can't get access. This, this forum is giving us that access. But generally, we cannot put questions to those people who are basically responsible for uh, pulling the levers or, or steering the ship. What we're now looking for is for the politicians to basically be proactive rather than reactive. We want you to go out, like Bob's sort of suggesting, to go out there and create a, create a vision that we can put not the grandchildren but the children of the grandchildren beyond so we can basically get a, a long-term vision for the country. And the media needs to be in, in congruent with that concept. Yeah. Can, can I Donnie, just Donnie. make a point about this? Uh, uh, Donnie, I I suggest... So we'll just take one more brief comment there and then we'll get Donnie, back to our I panel. suggest that all the political party put their performance targets on a website, just like we do for company executives. Then we can measure, after one year, what is their performance. OK, passionate comments. Uh, Bob Brown, just quickly, we might wrap this up, but uh, you wanted to comment. Oh, yes. You I, wanted to the, respond. The, the, the differences. Um, for example, uh, here we've got a government that's promoting the export of coal out of Australia to the rest of the world in an age of greenhouse gas crisis. 
Here we've got a government that's destroying the forests of Tasmania and it's getting behind Gunn's pulp mill, which is going to raise Australia's greenhouse gas output by 2%, as well as driving creatures like the Tas giant Tasmanian wedgetail towards extinction. Bob Brown, can I just interrupt there? Yeah. ANZ pulled its finance on, uh, on the pulp mill today. Yeah. Is that, is, um, can I just ask you, is that it? No, it's not, because uh, Gunn's is going to other finance houses to see if it can get the finance, but it's certainly another... Um, well, good on ANZ. Let's, let's people who uh, had withdrawn from ANZ can comfortably go back to ANZ now. <laughs> no, 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 Bob Brown, we're not going to do... Yeah, we're, so we're, so we're not going to do... No, 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 sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're going to change subjects the again. ABC, not no, the ABC, not All right, we're going to... It is the ABC. <laughs> OK, our next question... Our next question is from Ryan Bell. I'm from Camden, uh, where the proposed Islamic school was recently knocked back. Um, I just want to know if you think it's it's fair that people are so quick to put the, the racist tag and attach it to our opposition to the school. Is it a, is it a particular race that we oppose here? Um, or is it something like the... the impact that, uh, that the, this school will bring upon Camden and the possible... Uh, influence it'll have on the Camden culture. OK, well, this story has been all over the world. As the BBC honed in on the decision by a Camden Council outside of Sydney to refuse permission to an Islamic school to establish itself in the area. Louise Adler, what do you think? Have the opponents, like Ryan Bell, there in the audience, been wrongly tagged as racist? Well, when I heard on Talkback Radio um, one woman say, well, my problem is that I feel excluded because I don't speak Muslim, I did worry about the quality of debate, really, the tenor of the, um, you know, the mood, and I understand that two pig's heads were stuck on metal spikes with an Australian flag um, connecting them um, and, 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 and um, fixed into the site where the school was planned to be. I think that's very disturbing. I can't read it as anything other than profound xenophobia. And I think it's a damning indictment of Australian society. And I wonder... I do wonder whether... Um, and I'm sorry, Tony, you'll object vociferously to this, whether the former government's enthusiasm for private schools hasn't engendered the kind of reaction we're seeing today. Tony Abbott. Well, I, I think that um, uh, Australian parents have a right to choose... Uh, for their kids the kind of education that they want. As long as the curriculum is followed, uh, as long as certain basic standards are met, I think they have a right to do it. So if you want to set up a Christian school, a Jewish school, a Baha'i school, a Muslim school, um, there, well, that's the New South Wales public school system, I suspect. But I mean, <laughs> but I mean, I mean, I mean you, 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 have a, you have a right to do that, or you should have a right to do that. Now, I, I certainly don't leap to the conclusion that the people in Camden opposing this uh, are xenophobes, uh, let alone racists. Um, I think that all of these buildings, developments, have got to pass the ordinary sorts of tests. And I would say, uh, let the proponents of this school think about the reasons why it was rejected by, by council and come back with a new proposal that fits the planning requirements. Tony, can I just take up something that, that Tony said? I, I think that um, you just said that the New South Wales school system is the atheist school system. I, I think that this notion that public education is values-free yeah. is a very wrong notion. That, that's a fair and, point. Okay. It, was a throw, and, it was a bit of a throwaway right, but, line. But, but and I shouldn't have done it. And I shouldn't have done it. And I shouldn't have done it. But let's not forget that it was set up by Henry Parks back in 1872 to be free, compulsory and secular. Well, let's stick with the actual issue at hand here. Uh, do you think the well, people opposing the school were doing so on racial, for uh, racial reasons? Uh, I haven't seen the traffic plans. I haven't seen um, the details of the, the council's objections to it. Um, I did see some pretty unfortunate interviews uh, with people coming in and out of public meetings. Um, I hope that those people who were chosen to be interviewed don't represent the broad community in Camden. I hope they don't. Warren Mundine, I know you've actually been on local council. Do you, did you, do you actually believe it when the mayor said there was no racial... Uh, yeah. 
uh, question involved in the decision of the council? Look, to, to, to me, to, to me, there's the, yeah, okay, and, and I and uh, I agree with. Uh, I liked uh, Laurie Ferguson's line today, which was, you know, that the council may have rejected this on on, on planning laws. I haven't actually seen the submission, so I can't comment on that. But at the same time, we did see a, a fair amount of xenophobia there. I I, I agree with.